more of Ladies Can We Talk with Debbie Georgettis right here on 660 AM, The Answer. And welcome back to Ladies Can We Talk. Thank you so very much for tuning in this evening. We're focusing tonight on climate change. And the reason we're focusing on that is starting tomorrow, there's going to be a conference, the UN Conference on Climate Change, or I've been calling it the Communist Conference on Climate Change. But anyway, we're going to, in this segment, talk with uh, a friend of the show and a friend of ours for a long time, uh, United States Congressman Lamar Smith. Hello, sir. Debbie, always good to be with you and your listeners as well. Thanks so very much. Love having you. And the reason I'm, I'm so glad you're available to be on this show is because we've been talking about climate change. The whole show is really kind of dedicated to trying to share facts versus uh, myths or theories. And um, and in your particular case, you chair in the United States Congress, you're a congressman from Texas, but you chair the Science, Space, and Technology Committee. And you've recently had a bit of a run-in uh, in in not getting responses to subpoenas that your your committee has issued to the NOAA. So let me back up and say, what was the reason there were hearings to start with before your committee for the NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration? What were you? Why were they there in Congress talking to you? Well, we are wanting to get information both from NOAA called NOAA and the Environmental Protection Agency, which we also have jurisdiction over, because they are simply not being honest with the American people. And lots of times they're uh, rejiggering data to get the results they want. That is not good science. That is maybe politically correct science, or maybe it's science fiction, but it's not good science. And most recently with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they suddenly came out a few weeks ago and said, oh, guess what? The... uh, uh, the uh, climate warming uh, hiatus of 18 years, almost two decades now, when global temperatures have not gone up, according to almost every study, uh, they've now said, oh, that was, that was wrong. Uh, the global temperature actually has been increasing. So we said, okay, we want to see the data, and we want to see the official communications between various individuals at NOAA, because we're really suspicious about the timing right before this climate change conference in Paris, and we're suspicious because the no global warming over the last uh, almost 20 years has been acutely embarrassing to an administration uh, who said uh, global warming was going to become worse and we had to take all these drastic measures. And Debbie, guess what we found out already? Uh, and and that is that they were able to come up with their result of no in, of of an increase in global warming over the last 18 years by leaving out the most reliable data of all. They rejiggered their results, they skewed the data, and they left out the data uh, collected by satellites, which is the gold standard. Uh, The temperature collected by satellites is considered the gold standard because they're not susceptible to all the variations that land-based thermometers are. And, you know, suddenly you have a parking lot close by and the asphalt holds heat or for whatever other reason, but satellites have been the gold standard, and it's the satellites that have showed no global warming over the last 18 years. Well, of course, if you leave out the data from satellites, you are possibly going to get an increase in global warming, and that's exactly what they did. And now they're refusing um, uh, my subpoena uh, to comply with my subpoena because I said not only do I want the data, I want those public communications which aren't protected, and you need to disclose them, and uh, they are refusing to do so, which even doubles my suspicions about this uh, political agenda by this administration. You know, you said so many things there, it's really hard to decide which direction to go. But I do want to say for our listeners, and I know, uh, Congressman Smith, you've dealt with this issue for decades, but the global climate alarmists, the people who say that man-made global climate change is disastrous, is impending doom, and we have to do all sorts of extreme, take extreme measures in adjusting toward green energy and ending fossil fuels. All of that stemmed from the original belief that climate change was happening and the models created by computers that said, well, based on what we know now, look at this disaster that's going to immediately befall us or befall us over the next few years. And what happened with the climate change people, the climate change alarmists, the advocates for climate change, was that the real life data, the data collection didn't conform to all their models. And it has <laughs> driven them crazy. They just, it's kind of like they did this science experiment and the answer didn't come out the way they said. But you know what I think is just so interesting is in a real scientific endeavor, 
you would say, wow, look at these temperature changes. They don't comport with our models. And so you might adjust your model or your thinking or your theory. But I never hear that coming out of the climate change advocates. You know, Debbie, you just touched upon the most interesting thing I've heard recently. It was told to me by a bona fide climate scientist who happens to be a liberal Democrat who believes strongly in climate change. And the most trenchant thing I've heard, he said, Lamar, don't forget uh, there's a difference between environmentalists and climate scientists. He said the environmentalists are the activists. They have an agenda to promote, uh, and they're biased. And uh, he said the climate scientists know that there is no certainty. We can't predict what the weather is going to be in two weeks, much less in 95 years at the end of the century. And he said climate scientists, real scientists, believe in the scientific method. We welcome challenges to our theory, as you just said. Whatever our hypothesis or our thesis is, we want it to be challenged. We're constantly re- refining our work. And he said, no real scientist will say uh, something is settled or the facts are clear because we know we are uncertain in our findings. And uh, so that's an important distinction to make. You have this administration uh, during the data till they get the result they want. That's the opposite of the scientific method. I'm sorry, it's the opposite of science, you say? Yes, it is the opposite of science or the scientific method, correct. Yeah, and you know, it's so interesting. I actually had the pleasure this morning of speaking with uh, Lord Christopher Monckton, who is a British citizen, and he is among the more um, outspoken advocates for exposing what he calls climate change alarmism. And, and he was talking about how around the world you can see that this uh, movement about climate change, his ca- uh, characterization was much more political, much less scientific. It is with a an agenda toward mm-hmm. uh, control over in the energy sector, control over society. Do you, do you see that? Do you, do you agree? Yes, I, you know, but this is the mindset of this administration is that the more government, the better. The more government control, the better. Their mindset is we know better than the American people what's good for them. And if they can convince everybody about this global warming is as dangerous and as they say it is... Uh, I mean, it is alarmist, every other word you want to use. If they can convince people to be fearful, then they can step in and tell them what to do and how to run their lives. And that's what we need to be careful about because that's, I think, ultimately their agenda. It just defies common sense to think that human action is more important than natural cycles, more important than the axis of the... uh, of the earth or the rotation of the earth. There are bigger, bigger forces determining climate change than human emitted carbon dioxide. The best example I've seen is that if you took the entire atmosphere, all the gases in the atmosphere were represented by a football field, 100 yards long, the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere would be the width of a dime standing on edge at the end of the football field. And that's total carbon dioxide. Human-caused carbon dioxide is just a tiny fraction of that, and somehow that's supposed to determine our entire global temperature. That is, I love those picture stories. That is so good. So I want to be sure I got that. I was trying to even take notes while you were writing. If you were to picture a football field, and everyone can picture that, whether you go in person or watch on television, it's a hundred yards. So you're saying that the amount of CO2, as compared with the other gases in the atmosphere, is the width of one dime? With a one dime, a dime standing on edge at the end of the at the end of the hundred yard uh, field. That's right, and that's total carbon dioxide. Then human emitted carbon dioxide is just a fraction of that width of a dime. <laughs> and that is what's going to cause the oceans to rise and the glaciers exactly. to melt, and we'll all starve exactly. to death. Exactly, that's what they would want us to believe. Oh, my gosh. Well, Congressman Smith, I love that your committee is working both with the EPA and the and I actually didn't know if you're supposed to call it NOAA, but uh, I guess that is. how you, <laughs> Is that right? Okay. That's right. NOAA. But you're right about EPA has been our really our, our primary target. And but it's a, it's a common thread here. The administration will not make data public. They are not being transparent. They are not being honest with the American people. In the case of the EPA, we said we want to see the data that underlies all these regulations that you're imposing on the American people that cost so much and that sometimes don't even have any significant impact on global change whatsoever. But they cost us jobs, they cost us money. And guess what? The EPA will not disclose the data that was paid for by the American people, which again makes me very suspicious that the data 
does not demonstrate what they claim. Again, if it were a scientific experiment on a cure for some disease or whether, you know, everyone would want to know the truth and they would want to expose it and and then, you know, contrast it with other theories, other ideas. So this, the science part of it is kind of lost in this global climate change advocacy on the left. So what is the recourse that your uh, House Science Committee has if if NOAA does not want to produce these these, uh, the documents you've subpoenaed? Right. Well, we're doing three things. One, we're having having oversight hearings, and that is really helpful when you bring all this out uh, to the American people because they're on our side. Uh, Second of all, we are issuing subpoenas to try to get the accurate information. And thirdly, we're introducing bills. I introduced a bill that said no regulation can go into effect unless the underlying data has been made public. Uh, that has passed the House, has passed the Committee of Jurisdiction in the Senate, now ready for the Senate floor. The president, of course, immediately said he would veto it. I do not think he will veto a piece of legislation that's on his desk that says the American people have a right to know uh, what the basis of these regulations are. And my guess is if my bill uh, is enacted, uh, it will probably stop about 90% of these unnecessarily burdensome and unnecessary regulations. Look at the pa- the, the power plant regulation. Uh, Gina McCarthy, the head of the administrator, when I asked her when she came before my committee, I said, under using your own data, this is going to have a negligent a a negligible impact on climate change for the foreseeable future. Under your own data, it would only stop the uh, rise in oceans by one one one-hundredth of an inch, about the thickness of three pieces of paper. And she didn't dispute that. She just said, well, it's just important we show some action. Well, if that's the best they can do, if that's the best rationale they have, is just to show some action that's not even by their own admission going to have any impact, uh, that's a waste of effort, time, and money. It sure is. We're speaking uh, this evening with Congressman Lamar Smith, United States Congressman from the great state of Texas and chair of the Science Committee in the uh, House. And also uh, his committee has been dealing with two federal agencies that seem actually to think that they are tasked with the idea of forcing America to accept climate change as a reality versus studying what's real and then making regulation based on reality. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) And Good con- summary. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman Smith, what is the name of the bill you just described that passed the House, that passed the Senate Committee of Jurisdiction, essentially requires the data has to be shared before? Well, and, uh, we call it colloquially a uh, sort of no-secret science bill. Uh, gosh, I think it's in our ten, uh, H.R. 1030, uh, but anybody, uh, we can get it back maybe on the air a little bit later on, but I think it's H.R. 1030, and uh, it's the no-secret science bill. That is a great title and a great concept. Congressman Smith, thank you so very much for calling in tonight. Thank you, Debbie.